Hey everybody, it's AJ from Disney Food Blog, and you guys know I've been going to Disney World for a long, 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 long time. Like, I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but for a long time. And we've developed a few kind of must-do tips and tricks that people who are pretty much experts at doing Disney World can share. So here we go, let's go over some of our must-dos, our tips and tricks that the pros do, and you should too. First up, really try to visit the parks on weekdays, and this goes for Disney World and Disneyland, and even more so for Disneyland, honestly. If you go on the weekdays, you will definitely avoid the crazy crowds that come in on the weekends. A lot of times locals will visit the parks on weekends, they, they don't get there on the weekdays, so if you go during business hours, you're gonna have a less crowded experience most of the time, especially during those busy times of year. And a related tip is to travel at non-peak times. Really try to go when school is in session, there aren't big holidays or big breaks going on for the majority of the country or other countries, and choose those times if possible when everybody and their you know grandmother isn't at the park. So we're talking sort of mid-January, late January. You wanna skip kind of February, March, and April to skip spring break and Easter breaks. May and June sort of lighten up a little bit and then we're getting into those summer crowds once we get into october and november early december those are good times to go as well and you're also avoiding the horrible horrible heat that comes in orlando in the summertime which is really oppressive it's just awful <laughs> so try to get there in the fall or earlier in the year or right there in the middle kind of may time is a good time to go the next tip I'm gonna give you that the pros do, they're gonna book their meals at less popular times. So they're gonna go and eat not right at noon or 12.30, they're not gonna eat at you know 5.30, 6.30 p.m. for dinner. You're gonna have that brunch time frame from like 10 to 11.30 maybe. You're gonna eat lunch maybe from 1.30 to 4.30 in that time frame, and then dinner you, you can eat much, much later. This is like actually a good way to save money too. If you, you can only have two meals a day, have your mid-morning meal and your mid-afternoon meal and then you can just have a snack for the evening instead of paying the exorbitant dinner prices at Disney World. So that's a good tip to both avoid crowds and save some money. As far as where you're gonna go eat, consider some of those underrated restaurants, places like Sanaa and the Plaza Restaurant in Magic Kingdom, Trails End over at Fort Wilderness. Those are all relatively underrated restaurants. People don't really know about them, especially if they're spending all their time in the parks. They may not even have heard of those restaurants, but they're excellent places to go. A lot of places in Disney Springs are extremely underrated because nobody knows they exist yet. So head over to Disney Food Blog and check out kind of our recent reviews, some of our favorites, and head over to those underrated restaurants. Easier to get a reservation, easier to get a reservation time that you like. They're usually a little less expensive. Definitely worth it. In terms of paying for your meals, here's a tip. Get the free dining plan or get Tables in Wonderland if you qualify to get Tables in Wonderland. The free Disney dining plan will nearly always save you money, especially if you're eating all the food on the dining plan. It will probably save you some money if you happen to grab that package when it's available. And Tables in Wonderland is a membership card that you can get if you are an annual pass holder, a Disney Vacation Club member, or a Florida resident. And this will save you 20% on all your food and beverage, including alcohol at most table service restaurants and some counter service restaurants in Disney World. This thing saves me so much money every year. It's astounding. So look into Tables of Wonderland and see if you can get it. If you can't, try to get that free dining plan when that promotion is available. And when you're making those reservations, be sure to plan ahead. I know you've heard me say this a million times, but it really is critical and even more so now that they're bumping the reservation times back. They're letting more people come in and make their reservations early. Earlier, you definitely want to book your dining at 180 days in advance for those popular restaurants and book reservations for the rest of your dining as soon as you can just to make sure that you can lock in those reservations. Yes, you can absolutely get Disney reservations the day of, you can absolutely get reservations a week ahead, even for some of the most popular restaurants, but it's nice to just have that all taken care of, lock it away, and sort it out. Here's a little tip that's going on right now. Open Table just brought on a ton of Disney World restaurants to book through Open table.com. When you book through opentable.com versus through the Disney World system, you're not going to have to worry about putting down your credit card and paying for a cancellation charge or a charge a no-show charge, I should say. Whereas the Disney system right now you're paying $10 per person.
person for a no-show charge. And OpenTable doesn't charge you anything for a no-show charge. But just note that if you no-show for an OpenTable reservation three times, you will no longer be able to use that email address to use OpenTable. So hopefully that all makes sense to you if you guys are in the Disney World restaurant planning phase of your trip. OpenTable is a great option if you don't want to have to worry about no-show charges, but you can lose your OpenTable privileges altogether for your email address if you no-show more than three times. Okay, so I know I mentioned a couple of resort restaurants there. So here's another big tip that I love to share. Go to the resorts and the hotels for your food. There's gonna be fewer people there. You're not gonna be battling park crowds, especially during the day. Those restaurants can be practically empty and they're some of the best restaurants in Disney World. So jump on the monorail and head over to Wilderness Lodge or Grand Floridian or Polynesian or the Contemporary to get some eats while you're at the Magic Kingdom. If you're in Epcot, head over to Yacht Club or Boardwalk or Beach Club or Swan and Dolphin to get some food instead of battling the park crowds for food. If you're in Hollywood Studios, again, those same ones, although it's a little bit more of a trek to get over to Swan and Dolphin and Boardwalk, Beach Club, Yacht Club. And if you're in the Animal Kingdom, consider heading over to Animal Kingdom Lodge and going to Sanaa for lunch. The place is amazing. Really, really good food, awesome theming, great atmosphere, really worth the, the trip if you can make it. So head over to those resorts enjoy the resort restaurants they're so so good again head over to Disney food blog and get our tips on which ones we think are the best and of course in our DFB guide to Walt Disney World dining we have full chapters on our recommendations for where you should eat so lots of resort restaurants included in there as well and you can go to the resorts even if you're not staying there a lot of people don't think that you can they welcome you in there if you're not staying there you know of course they'd want you to stay there eventually so how do you know if you like it if you haven't been there Next up, keep your external chargers handy. I know that these phones are getting better and better and these devices are getting better and better and they're they're keeping their charge for much longer. But if you're really active on social media or if you're really using your phone quite a bit to keep track of your trip, you may run out of battery. So keep those external chargers, those lipstick chargers or those external power sources handy while you are in the parks to use as a quick recharge. Another thing to keep in your park bag, I always have handy wipes or hand sanitizer, usually handy wipes in my park bag because a lot of times you're eating on the go, you've got kids and they're, you know, they're eating sticky stuff or messy stuff and it just comes in so handy to have those handy wipes or wet ones, things like that in your bag. So just throw a travel pack of those in your bag just to have handy. You'd be surprised how often you use them. Another tip right now, which is especially relevant, is to plan extra time for Disney Springs. If you haven't been to Disney World since this big renovation from downtown Disney to Disney Springs, you are in for a big surprise. This place is huge and it's really, really great. It is a shopping and dining district, so there's not gonna be a lot of rides in there and things like that, but it's a pretty amazing place. And so if your kids are old enough that they can handle kind of going to stores and shopping, or if you're on an adults only trip and you really enjoy doing that sort of thing, make some serious time for Disney Springs. And also the food here is wonderful. I would say that this is probably my favorite quote unquote park for food now. Like this supersedes Epcot for me. This is the place to go if you want really, really good food. So definitely make time for Disney Springs on your next trip. And finally, I would say consider a ride sharing program. So consider Lyft or Uber and those minivans, you guys, I take those minivans everywhere now. I used to be a dedicated rental car person. I get a rental car every time because I'm going back and forth all the time. I'm going from Magic Kingdom for an hour, then I had to Epcot, then I've got to go over here and over here and over here. I use those minivans a lot actually. It costs me less than doing a rental car. And in terms of time savings over the buses, it is phenomenal. So if you're one of those people like me, where time is money and you're only in Disney World for a few days and you really want to make the most of your time there, using a rideshare program like Uber, Lyft, or those those brand new minivans is really outstanding. It'll change your life if that's something that you're interested in doing is saving time getting places quickly in Disney World. Okay, so I know a few of you are saying, AJ, you're crazy. Minivans are $20 a pop. They're really expensive. I'm going to get around Disney with Disney transportation for free. Thank you very much. And I totally get that. That makes perfect sense. But just one thing to remember if you've got an early morning advanced dining reservation when those buses aren't running or if you've got little kids that you need to schlep around the minivans do run very very early and they also have two really high-end really good car seats in every minivan to use so that's pretty awesome also remember that your lift credits work with minivans so if you have lift credits free rides or 50% off rides or something like that those work with the minivans as well if they're your on your lift app 
So hopefully that will help you. Those are some tips and tricks that the pros do and the experts do when they're getting around Disney and trying to save money and really do it the most efficient way possible. Hopefully that helped. I hope you let us know in the comments what your tips are, what your diehard kind of tricks, the things that you would love to share with your friends and family about going to Disney World. Let us know in the comments because our readers would love to read, uh, or our viewers, sorry, <laughs> used to saying readers with our blog. Our viewers would love to see your tips and I can't wait to to hear what you have to say and learn from you guys too. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog. We will see you real soon.